What is good, family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to give you guys a very quick update on the market and break down how things are looking. But let me first say that I'm not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500 into the account, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, looking at Tesla, Tesla's kind of range bound right now. We have resistance at 172.5. We also have support currently at around this 170 area. This has been our pre-market support. Tesla's showing a little bit of weakness on the hourly time frame. It's trying to hold its 50 EMA a little bit below that. So we have to see how well Tesla holds up. I do want to note that compared to Tesla, SPY is showing a little bit more strength as it's trying to push for this 515 resistance. If we do break through this, we could see a push for 518. And if, even if we do push a little bit on SPY, it does not guarantee anything because it could always push a little higher and then get a big rejection. Or if it fails to break 515 to 516.5, we could reject from right here. So I want to be very careful. The charts are still on a big downtrend right over here. We're not going to likely make a full recovery today, depending on the factors that come out. And uh, it's very important to be patient. So I'm going to break down some more details about these charts in just a few minutes. Talk about why we're seeing some very, very... Uh, new developments and how things are looking in my opinion uh, but i'm going to be talking more about some data first so the reason why the market kind of like popped a little bit and came back down and started to see more volatility is because we got some unemployment numbers the numbers are not the best but also they're not horrible it's kind of like a mix so uh, overall non-farm payrolls were 303,000. that's above expectations showing strength in the labor market unemployment was 3.8 percent and also the labor force participation rate ended up going up just slightly at 62.7 percent that's above expectations showing strength in the labor market as well so what's happening is we're seeing strength in the labor market uh right now this is not necessarily what we want to see at least from the fed the fed does warn that this could lead to higher inflation but what is also good about this data is the fact that this does kind of like incentivize the, the whole soft landing narrative that Jerome Powell has pushed in the past. The Fed is shifting their tone, however, so it's very, very mixed. That's why the market kind of had a mixed reaction. Tesla's a little bit weaker, but we'll have to see how things go from here. Moving forward now, I just want to warn you all that we have a bunch of Fed speakers coming out. We have Barkin giving a speech, Bowman giving a speech at noon, and we have more of them coming out later on. So that's going to be like how the day kind of pro uh, progresses. When it comes to other pieces of data, we saw a big tumble on Thursday, which may still continue to affect us. We saw a big spike in oil prices and fears that the Fed might wait to cut interest rates, which kind of hurt a lot of investment sentiments. So that's very important. That's part of why the market sold off the way it did. And that's very important for Tesla because Tesla is very dependent on interest rates. The jobs reports just came out pretty strong so far and even better than some expectations. So with that coming out, we're seeing some changes with uh, we had U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen start her first full day of meetings in China by encouraging the country to pursue market-oriented reforms, discussing, discussing, excuse me, overcapacity concerns as well. That's very important, uh, as we just saw her over there. And then Ford said it's going to be delaying production on its new all-electric SUV and pickup truck. I actually have headlines right here about this. They're delaying production on the next-gen electric three-row SUV to 2027. And it was supposed to be produced in 2025, but they're delaying it because of what's happening with the EV market. Uh, this has been very slow for them, so it's a very, very big change that has been going on. That's it for the main headlines for the overall markets. World EV sales now make up about 13% of world auto sales, which is some good news for the market. The Tesla Model Y and the Tesla Model 3 being the top two EVs in the world thus far. There's also news coming out right here about how uh, Tesla is offering a lot more discounts on their SUVs. And they're doing so because they're trying to get rid of old inventory. The real wheel drive uh, version is going to about 4600 less than the cost of the custom order. And their others discounts by at least $5,000. They're doing this for about 46,500 vehicles. And this is very important because... Uh, for production, you guys can see right over here, the production's exceeding deliveries by a large extent. So we're trying to get rid of as, of as many of them as possible. We also had some more news come out that Brinkman cut its price target for shares to $115 from $130 and lowered its estimates for the first quarter earnings. So we got some negative news from analysts and we got some news about them slashing some prices, which led to this little drop in Tesla right over here. We're still barely holding support, so we're not officially bearish. But I'm going to say watch this range right over here. Tesla's been stuck between 170 and about 172 all day today and also yesterday during the after hours. 
So if we're bearish, you want to see Tesla lose 170. If we lose that, we could come all the way down to 167.8. If we're bullish, you want to see it break 172.5. If we break it, we could be pushing all the way up to about 173.75. Uh, Overall, we're kind of stuck in the middle, going back and forth and back and forth. But Tesla's showing a little bit of weakness because of the price cut it just got from some analysts. And the fact that Tesla is going to be cutting a little bit of their prices just to try to get some sales back up for the overall inventory that they have that's excessive. So it is looking a little bit weaker, guys. Uh, we're barely holding 170, so watch that support, and we'll see if Tesla ends up losing this. Uh, I do want to note that we could actually try to pop a little bit with SPY if we do get a little push first before it may continue lower, so just be careful with this. Uh, so there is a risk of it coming down. Uh, let's see if we get a little pop first before we come down or not. It also depends on SPY. Looking at SPY, we're seeing some weakness. So a big issue I see on the chart is the fact that spy has been trying to rebound a bit testing 515's resistance but the issue is we haven't been able to break through this and start pushing for 516.5 and above we're kind of struggling at 515 so watch 515 if we break this watch for 516.5 and then if we break that 518 is coming and if we fail to break this 515 resistance at 516.5 we're going to be sinking all the way down to 512.5 and if we lose that there's more downside coming all the way down to like 510 eventually 508 so you want to be very careful right here on spy we're seeing some weakness as we're kind of rejecting off this 515 area not looking that strong we'll have to see if we can try to break through this to try to pop a little bit higher before we continue lower but the chart is looking bearish overall in my personal opinion as this thing has been uh you know we have a very very big red bar and it's still like really affecting us right now uh on the qqq i'm seeing the same thing this thing was attempting to rebound too. We're testing resistance at 438. I did call out this resistance yesterday as a tight level to watch for. If we break this, if we do get above 438, we're going to be looking for a push for 440 plus. And if we end up losing 436, we could be sinking all the way down to 434, if not 432 and 430. Now, right now, we're kind of struggling to break 438. The chart's showing some weakness. We'll see if it attempts to push a little bit higher upon open, but it could turn later on because of all these Fed speakers. So just be very, very careful. We'll have to give this all the time it needs. For Apple, it's the same thing. Apple's trying to rebound a little bit, showing a little bit more strength as we're testing this 170 resistance. If we break through this, we're going to be looking for a move all the way back up towards 170.9. If we fail to break 170, we're going to be coming back down to 169. So overall, I'm seeing some more strength in Apple than other stocks out there. So we'll see if Apple gets this break, and this could actually help spy into others. So we'll give this a little bit more time. What else is affecting the QQQ is NVIDIA. NVIDIA right now is showing a little bit of potential trying to push back up to about 866 if we keep going watch 874 if we break that we could be pushing for 884 above that uh, i do see potential for it to push a little bit higher but watch and see if we get rejection off the 872 to 874 area there's a head and shoulders so i'm still seeing weakness on the chart of nvidia could be forming a flag so it might push a little bit more but watch resistance let's see if we reject or not with that being said guys make sure you watch your range on tesla and we have critical support on tesla at this uh, 170 area and also 167.8 if tesla loses that we turn a lot more bearish the chart is showing a little bit of weakness with the price cuts that came so give tesla the time it needs and we'll see how things go could rebound a bit first if spy does try to bounce and then start dropping later so make sure you watch for that just to be safe unless we start losing support then we could really start sinking so i'm seeing a little bit of weakness on tesla be careful guys do what you have to do and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for listening and peace out